Stardew Valley has a lot of items, and I mean a lot. And while some of them are super useful to craft, like sprinklers or kegs, many of them just aren't. A lot of them were added upon Stardew's initial release and haven't been updated since. Like the worm bin. I don't think I've ever seen a single person craft a worm bin. But there are tons of items like this that will never get used for one reason or another. Well today, I'm making it my goal to fix these items. Whether that be in a way that makes them profitable, unique, or just more fun. I'm giving myself creative freedom to fix whatever I want about these items. My goal isn't to make these items broken though. I'm just hoping to bring them to a neutral power level or give them some sort of situational usage. And I'll try and be more creative than just, the worm bin now gives 999 bait every single day. So the first item I wanna take a look at is the crab pot. Now the crab pot is a crafting recipe you unlock at fishing level three. If you fill it up with bait, it will catch several unique low selling fish and 40% of the time it'll catch trash. There's a crab pot bundle in the community center, but it can be, and most of the time is, completed without ever crafting a crab Pot. This makes the crab pot probably one of the most known but least used items in Stardew. I almost never craft crab pots for any reason at all. And there's an entire profession path dedicated to them. So what are the big problems with crab pots? Well firstly, they're way too expensive for the effect they give. It costs three iron bars to craft a crab pot. Three iron bars. And crab pots are something you're supposed to have a ton of. You're supposed to place them all throughout the ocean and the lake. And they are more expensive than a sprinkler. Even if you're to take the trapper profession and you lower the cost of crab pots to be two copper bars and 25 wood, that's still probably way too much for its value. The second big problem with crab pots is what it actually catches. First of all, 40% of the time, you're just gonna be catching trash. And the other 60% of the time that it catches something, the fish are extremely low value, with most of them only being in the low double digits amounts of gold. So how would we fix this? Well, firstly, we should make them much cheaper to produce. A single copper bar and 40 wood would still probably make crab pots pretty irrelevant. But honestly, no matter how easy crab pots were to make, in their current state, I'd probably still never craft them. So what if we gave crab pots something unique just to them? I mean, there's an entire profession path dedicated to them. They have to be significant in some way, right? I think it might be fun if crab pots could spawn foods that gave various buffs that would give the same effects as bobbers. For example, what if you added a chance to get a sea star from a crab pot that could give you a buff that slightly increased the size of your fishing bar? Or what if they could catch crab legs that can make fish bite more often? You could add one for each bobber effect to help with fishing. Perhaps these crab pot events could even be separate from food buffs so that you could stack it with something like a trout soup. While these wouldn't be mind-blowingly overpowered, they would definitely be interesting enough to help the people in the community who struggle with fishing. The next item I want to take a look at is the geode crusher. Most of you probably forgot this thing was even in the game. The geode crusher is a recipe that you can get by completing Clint's special order on the bulletin board. The geode crusher provides an alternate way to opening geodes in that if you place geodes inside of it, it'll crush them without having to go to Clint's. The process is slightly different than it is at Clint's though, because the geode crusher uses one coal and cracking the geodes takes an hour as opposed to happening instantly. For obvious reasons, no one has ever used the geode crusher. Even if you're willing to wait a whole hour to crush a single geode, it's almost always better to pay the 25G to Clint as opposed to the single coal you'd need to use. By the time you get this item, you're probably in year two where coal costs 250 G. That's 10 times the amount that it would cost to just crush it at Clint's. And coal is famously one of the hardest resources to gather without buying. But how do we fix this? Well, honestly, I might consider using the geode crusher if it could crack multiple geodes at once. In the end game, you end up cultivating so many geodes and you really only need to find one or two artifacts. And no one wants to go to Clint's and sit there for an hour cracking open geodes one by one. Now, if the geode crusher could instead automate the geode crushing process and allow me to throw a whole stack of geodes in there at once and then maybe open up like a chest with all the rewards when it was done, I would use that all the time. Maybe it could cost 
cost one coal for every five geodes, so they would cost more than cracking them at Clint's, but the margin wouldn't be as huge of a difference. It'd be great for the end game where you try to automate as much as you can on your farm. Next up, we have an item that you don't really craft, but instead one of the elusive wallet items. During the 1.3 update, Concerned Ape realized that there was this huge space in the wallet, so he added just a bunch of random items to fill out the space. Most of these items are extremely niche and not really useful for anything at all. The most useless one by far is an item you get called Spring Onion Mastery. Spring Onion Mastery is an item you receive upon getting to eight hearts with both Jazz and Vincent. Keep in mind that in my opinion, Jazz is one of the hardest people in the game to befriend as her love gifts are pretty difficult to cultivate. So after getting to eight hearts with both of them, you get a small cutscene with Vincent and Jazz. In this cutscene, Vincent shows you how to peel back the skin of a spring onion so that you don't eat the bugs. Which is a disgusting scene, by the way. We've just been eating bugs this whole time? Why would you tell us this, Vincent? Please, just let me live in ignorant bliss. Anyways, after that disgusting scene, you gain Spring Onion Mastery, which quintuples the selling price of spring onions, all the way from 8G to 40G. Wow, what a rush. The chances of you getting this far into the game and having any reason to ever sell spring onions is so insanely small. I don't think in my 1000 hours of Stardew have I ever sold a spring onion on purpose. Is 32G ever really gonna make a difference? A change that I would make to make spring onion mastery at least somewhat significant without making it overpowered is for it to make spring onions a universal like. As it stands now, spring onions are liked by Harvey, Leah, and Linus, and disliked by every other NPC. Seeing as spring onions don't really have any use outside of maybe some food in the mines in your first spring, if they became a universal like, it would make spring onions a useful tool to maximizing the friendships for hard to befriend NPCs, like Jazz and Pierre. Also, it would make sense in the context of the cutscene, as removing the bugs would make them less gross to NPCs and make them like them more. Now next up, we have a bit of a fan favorite item, the Bee House. Now the bee house is a really interesting item as I'm sure you know. A bee house is a machine that can be crafted using 40 wood, 8 coal, 1 iron bar, and a maple syrup. The bee house will then produce a single honey every 4 nights that sells for 100 G. However, if a flower is growing within a 5 tile radius of the bee house, it'll produce honey correlated to that flower, which increases the sell value based off the type of flower. With the highest selling honey, the fairy rose honey, selling for a whopping 680 G. Now the flower buff with the bee Bee house is really interesting and it makes for a really intriguing mechanic. Unfortunately, the price of the honey is slightly too weak to be worth giving up any valuable farmland space. And the flower honey buff doesn't work with flower pots, so you can't place them in somewhere like the quarry. And in addition to all that, the flowers have to be fully grown for this to work. So while the 680G you get per fairy rose sounds nice, you only really get like three harvests of it per year. I've got a couple ideas for fixing this one. The first one is just to make the turnaround time on honey quicker. If it was every other night as opposed to every four nights, then at least you could get a couple harvests down with each flower. You could also make it so that bee houses produced flowered honey even if the flower isn't fully grown. Since the bees are helping with pollination while the flower grows, it would make sense that they're producing honey this whole time. My last idea for buffing the bee house would be if they gave a special buff to flower-based crops that made them grow 20% faster. Almost like a fertilizer that you don't need to place on the hoed ground. This could even stack with fertilizer to make crops grow absurdly fast. Most of the flowers are not really super profitable crops, so this special buff could make them more desirable, making both bee houses and flower-based crops cooler. Also, I just think it'd be really cute if the bee house spawned little bees around it. Kinda like the butterfly hutches do for butterflies, you know, but for like cute little bees. Next up, we have an item that gave me the idea for this entire video, the worm bin. Now, like I said, the worm bin is pretty bad and it's got three major problems. It's too expensive to craft, you don't unlock the recipe until fishing level eight and it doesn't produce enough bait. Firstly, let's lower that crafting cost as you currently need one gold bar, one iron bar, 50 fiber and 25 hardwood? 25 hardwood? Are you serious? 25 hardwood? That's an absurd amount of hardwood. All that just for the worm bin? That's ridiculous. Let's adjust this crafting recipe to two copper bars, an iron bar, and 70 fiber. Next, let's adjust this to unlock at fishing level six. I know it doesn't seem like much, but by fishing level eight, you've usually done all the fishing you need to in this game. And the difference between fishing level six and fishing level eight is monumental. 
Finally, I'd like to give the worm bins a chance to produce wild bait after you have unlocked the recipe. Wild bait is insanely useful, but it's so hard to craft. So I would definitely set up a couple worm bins around my farm if it could produce wild bait. All right, before we get into the last item I'd want to look into fixing, let's do a bunch of rapid fire small changes I want to make to some items. The hopper. The hopper should be able to unload from machines. The fact that it can't makes it pretty much useless. Farm computer. The farm computer needs to specify which machines are ready and not just that machines are ready on your farm. The stone chest. Now the stone chest you work really hard to get and then it's completely identical to a wooden chest. The stone chest should have an extra row of inventory space because it's both harder to craft and harder to get the crafting recipe for. Finally, the slime hutch. Please, I just asked for one thing with this thing. Please just let us dye these things like we do with sheds. Please. It's so ugly. The last item I want to talk about today is something that I'm sure every person who has completed the community center has wondered about. Yes, we're talking about the copper pan. Upon finishing the fish tank bundle at the community center, you're awarded the removal of the glittering boulder at the river lake, and it's by far the most underwhelming of all the community center rewards. Removing the glittering boulder will allow you to use the copper pan on shimmering lights in the water. These shimmering lights have a chance to drop a variety of ores, gems, and even geodes, though the chances for getting any gems are so low that more often than not, you're just gonna get copper ore or coal. Now for being the reward for completing the fish tank bundle, this is extremely underwhelming. By the time you finish the fish tank bundle, you've gone through your first year of the game at least. And your reward is sometimes getting six copper ores from the river. Great. The copper pan is by far the most underwhelming features of this game in so many ways. There's a couple avenues we could go with the panning rework, but the easiest by far to implement would just be to give you an increased chance to give you artifacts that you don't already own. Completing the museum is one of the hardest tasks in Stardew, and the artifacts in particular are exceedingly tricky, and this would give an alternative to grinding out artifact troves. It also makes sense that the rare relics get washed up in the river. Another avenue that could work is to have the copper pan pull from the fishing treasure chests pool. These items are already in the water, so what's stopping them from being panned up? There are a lot of really rare items in these fishing treasure chests, like iridium bands, the treasure chest item. This could be far more interesting than normal gemstones we're used to panning up. I think in general, the biggest change that would help is to make the shimmering lights just more common in general. Right now, I would say it's very rare to see shimmering lights in the river. And honestly, the fact that you can get the best ring in the game from them, the lucky ring, makes me want to seek them out. It's just such a rarity to ever even see them at all that it's not even worth it to carry the copper pan on you. They should honestly just be as common as fish so that you can pan all day if you really want. The last change I'd make is that we have to be able to upgrade this thing to iridium. It just looks so weird having all your fully upgraded iridium tools in your inventory and then one single copper tool. It feels dirty. And, and also it should look cooler when you put it on your head. Thanks everyone for checking out the video today. If you liked the video please make sure to give it a like and subscribe as well. It helps me out a ton and it's it's how I'm able to give you guys more high quality content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.